Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we have been doing this series on trading all players to all the lands. We did uh, Chikrin. We we did uh, we just did uh, Mark Andre Fleury, and we did we're going to be doing JT Miller up so probably somewhere down the road, but maybe not if you look at the article that we're about to look at here. It's a very good article that kind of gives us some information of what the Vancouver Canucks might be doing. But we got Ben Sherratt, all the tra- we've been trading uh, all the big names that have been out there as possible trades. And uh, we're going to go with another one here. The one that I find very, very interesting, um, Connor Garland. Connor Garland is out there. Uh, right now is a possibility and the reason why as we're going to see in the article is it seems Vancouver is not so much on trading JT Miller which makes sense he seems to be sort of the heart of that organization right now kind of the captain even though maybe he's not but he has brought an energy to that team that I don't think they can ill they can ill afford to lose even though he's a little older he wants to stay he wants to be there. Um, the difficult thing about trading Connor Garland, of course, is that, well, they just signed him, uh, just traded for him, actually, and they just signed him to a long-term deal. Now, the good news for them is that was old management. That was Benning. Brian Benning made that move, and now you have new management coming in, uh, new coach and Bruce Bruce Boudreau, like everything has changed there. Um, normally, I would say this is a very bad move because the optics and how it makes the team feel uh, it can create a really bad morale in your organization. And it doesn't look good to sign players like that and then trade them. Other p- players in the league kind of go, do I want to go there? Like if you ever want to sign a free agent, they're going to think, yeah, I remember when I did to that guy, though. Do I want to go there and risk them just kind of using me as a, you know. So I imagine they would kind of talk to Connor about this, go to them and say, hey, uh, I know we brought you in here with the trade, but it didn't work out. And uh, it looks like we, we have to make some room. Um, what's the prospect of us? Uh, not really what's the prospect. We're going to have to let you go. We're going to have to find another place for you. It's not working out here. Now, the thing is, Connor Garland is not doing anything wrong for Vancouver. Um, he's actually an awesome player. He, his point totals aren't as high, and we're going to look at that too, as they were last year. But nobody in Vancouver's point totals are as high as they were before. But he's a, a, a smaller guy that plays way bigger than he is. He's courageous. He is a go-hard-every-shift type player that can put up points. But I could see that they're going to have to move somebody. They're going to have to move some guys to get some space to sign the guys they've decided they can't lose. JT Miller is a is a center. Garland is a winger. And as we'll look, because we're going to look into Vancouver's roster, they got a few too many players like him. And uh, it just seems that at $5 million a year, he could be the odd man out. So first of all, we're going to look at the article and see that I'm not talking out of my butt. It comes from a pretty good source. Then we're going to look at Garland and his point totals over his career, where, how much he makes and all of that. We'll look at Vancouver and what they might be looking for and why they may be looking to trade him. And then we're going to look at five teams that he could be going to if Vancouver decides to do this. So let's take a look. Okay, so here is the article, and it was on 32 Thoughts, Mr. Elliot Friedman. Everybody in the land knows Elliot Friedman. Elliot Friedman's hired by Sportsnet. Generally doesn't make stuff up as he goes along. He has a lot of... uh, He's got a reputation to hold on to. So he's not going to say things that are completely off the wall. Um, The organizations would get upset with Sportsnet for saying a bunch of stuff that has no bearing whatsoever. And he says, Mr. Friedman says, my sense is that 
Part of Vancouver's thought process includes the possibility of re-signing JT Miller and not trading him. I'm not saying that that's the likely outcome, but at the very least, they're, inv they're investigating the idea. I don't know why I say uh, what it would take. That's one reason other names like Connor Garland are out there. President of Hockey Operations Jim Rutherford wants to create room and will explore almost all options to do it. I do think at least one team's made a run at Miller, my guess is the Rangers, but obviously not to the point where the Canucks said yes. So I was thinking about doing JT Miller until I saw this. And this isn't the only source that I saw this. So then I was like, well, let's say they go that route. Where could he possibly go? Why would they want to do this? What's the validity of what he's saying? Because it's Elliot Freeman, I think it's a pretty good chance that there is some heavy, some fire to the smoke that he is, he's bringing up. So first we'll look at Connor himself. Connor is 5'10", not the tallest guy in the world, um, 165 pounds. But if I don't know if you've watched Connor play. If you're a hockey fan and you're listening to this, you probably have. He is a beast for his size. He doesn't back down from anyone. I love, love, love him. If you're looking for a guy that's going to bring courage and leadership and fire and energy to your team and also can put up some killer points, this is a guy. Also, he was a fifth-round pick, so he's beat the odds. This guy doesn't give up. And I've heard him in interviews, and he is confident as heck. Like, that's another thing. If, if, you're, if, if there's a team that's, like, lacking confidence um, and they would like to bring some guys to change that energy, this would be one. And uh, we're going to look at one of those teams, um, probably the first team that comes up. Not my most likely place, but... It's still a really good possibility, but we'll look at that in a second. He's making $5 million for the next four years. Uh, his, it's all the money for his point production, I would say, $5 million. Um, over time, this could turn out to look like a really good contract. Right now, it's probably about where he should be at. Um, he has put up 39 points in 68 games. Then 39 points in 49 games before Vancouver made the trade to get Ekman Larson and Connor Garland for really a lot of salary dump and uh, some picks. Um, really good. That's really good production. Now, as you can see, his production has slipped. He's probably a, he's about a 48 point player this year, but everybody's production has slipped in Vancouver. And one thing that hasn't slipped with Mr. Connor Garland is his intensity every single game. He has not shown that any sort of complaining or whining or let down or anything. It just the points haven't been getting on the board. This is going to be a highly sought off after player if he's available, I believe. And uh, let's look at like why Vancouver may make this decision. Well, first of all, you got to look at the cap. They have nothing no cap space, of course, right now. And they only have $10 million next year. But that's based on the fact that JT Miller, uh, oh, sorry, uh, and, oh, sorry, JT, they got JT Miller for one more year, and they're going to have to re-sign him after that. But Brock Besser is a guy that they're going to have to re-sign. So they, when you think about it, as much as you love Connor Garland, Brock Besser is probably going to be $7 million, somewhere around there. Which you got to choose somebody. I imagine if they have a choice, Connor Garland makes some sense. And another reason why I think that that Connor Garland makes sense in that situation, Besser is a shoot first guy. Connor Garland's more of a passer. They have a lot of good passers on their team, um, and they have a lot of guys that are small energy guys. One in particular, which is very important to them, is. Hoglander, um, where is he now? Oh, yeah, here, Niels Hoglander, only 21 years old, makes a lot less money, and he projects to be the same type of player. So as Hoglander, who's 21, again, 
probably able to put up the same point production, plays that high energy type game, maybe not quite as intense and in your face as uh, Connor Garland, but this would free up some space to sign Brock Besser, maybe do some other moves, and Hoglander can take that spot. With Connor Garland, Garland there, it sort of takes up the spot that they want to give to Hog, Hoglander. Um, even when they made this deal to begin with, I was like, do they really need Connor Garland? It seemed very desperate. Uh, they all have, they also got Oliver ekman Larson out of that deal. I didn't think that was a very good deal. He seemed to be on a serious decline. But anyways, that's past, and now it's now. And that's sort of what I'm talking about, where they can put this spin on it to say, I know old management had it this way, but we don't see it that way. Um, we love you. We wish you could keep you, but I think we're going to have to move on. Okay, so let's look at some of the, the teams that would be interested and able. And remember, they're not looking for money back here. So that's one of the biggest things. First of all, we have the Chicago Blackhawks. And one of the reasons why I picked the Chicago Blackhawks is, first of all, he's only 25 years old. That's, that's important. Chicago is not looking for older players for sure. But they are looking for guys that have confidence and heart. This team has not been playing with confidence and heart. A lot of that has to do with the organizational problems that we've had that you, it's all very, everybody's aware of with the sexual assault and all that. I think it's really weighed heavy on a lot of the players here in this room. He would be a fresh face in a new room and kind of hadn't gone through all of that. And he brings the energy no matter what. He's shown it to bring a pushback energy and confidence no matter what the situation is. Because Vancouver hasn't really been that, in a, has been really in a tough spot as well. But it's never stopped with him. So who would go back? I'm thinking Philip Kurashev might be something, somebody that Vancouver would take a look at um, to be able to fill a role in the lower lineups. He doesn't make much money. He is a restricted free agent, but shouldn't command all that much. Um, maybe, you know, a little bit of a raise on what he's already making for a couple of years, something of that uh, or something like that. Um, I would really love to get Mackenzie Entwistle out of this deal if you could, but I am not sure that they would be very happy with or very uh, – uh, they, I, I don't think they'd be very motivated to lose him because he is that type of player. But let's say they simply just get Kershev and Entwistle out of the deal. They may do it. Entwistle's probably not the most offensive guy down the road. He is sort of a guy like um, the player that they're going to be bringing in, but he's bigger. 6'3", 181. Vancouver needs some big guys that can bring the pain. I like Entwistle and Kurashev for Connor Garland. What do you guys think there in uh, Chicago land? Would you do a deal like that? Maybe, you know, Caleb Jones that they got from Edmonton, but I think they like the idea of keeping the, the brothers together. The other one I looked at was possibly Calvin DeHaan because Vancouver is going to have to fill out their defense. However, I think their motivation right now is – to get cheap, to pay the guys that they got, and then they'll worry about uh, building up their defense later. I have that feeling. Also, he's a free agent at the end of the year, so they'd have to work out a deal with him, uh, with his agent, before they could even make a move like that. And I think Tahan's probably going to be making right what he's making now or more, a little more, on the open market. So my I, I think maybe McKen um, McKenzie Entwistle and Kurashev, and you can now put Connor Garland, who can play right or left wing, by the way, equally as well. Um, by the way, if you like this fine programming, sub yourself up, hit the like button, help this out, come and join. I do a show five days a week called uh, My NHL Pearls of or the Pearl of Wisdom Show, and uh, from three thirty to five thirty, you can be part of that and talk about this with me. It'd be great. Um, but he can go up here in this spot, play with a guy like Kirby Dock and Hagel. Oh, that would be a good line. It really would be a good line. Um, and now, another thing that Chicago people are going to be saying right now is, what about the cap space for Chicago? What are they going to do? 
they're probably trading Ryan, Dylan Strom. Uh, so he'll probably be gone. Uh, and also, I just really believe Marc Andre Fleury is not going to be there next year. Now, I know you're going to have to find another goaltender, but I have a feeling that there's going to be a rebuild here in Chicago, anyways. So um, having a young guy like Connor Garland, a good a good guy for that, it's a good place to put the money. They're going to need it anyways. You can find a cheaper goaltender than Flurry and maybe be able to work out work it so he works in under the cap there in Chicago. Tell me what you think, Chicago fans. What do you like about that deal or not like about it? And sub yourself up, as I said. Get yourself subbed up to my channel. I want to hear from all of you guys. Next, Dallas Stars. And um, the reason why I took the uh, thought about the Dallas Stars is, first of all, they, they are wanting to stay on the young side. Um, they're needing some younger players here. But the player that I have going back here is also young, and that is Dennis Gurianov. Dennis Gurianov is a, is a restricted free agent coming up at the end of the year. They would have to talk to him about what his expectations are for a new contract. Uh, Vancouver is not saving a ton of money by taking Dennis Gurianov here. Um, I think Connor Garland is a much better player than Dennis Gurianov, and I do believe it would also cost Dallas a draft pick. Nothing much more than that, I would say, would they uh, be willing to take back as far as players are concerned? Dallas isn't too motivated to try to lose players either. They're in a playoff race. They want to win. They get an upgrade on wing here to play with Sagan and Ben. Uh, Dennis Gurianov, they've been working with him. He hasn't progressed as much as they like. Hasn't had a terrible year this year, but for the top six minutes he's had, he really should have more points than this. Now, why would Vancouver want something like that? Well, first of all, they're taking a $2.5 million player. Uh, they're getting, they're probably not going to have to sign him for much more than three in his next contract for maybe two years. So they're saving themselves about $2 million on the cap. I'm not sure if that's enough, but it's possible. And that's the reason why I took Dallas here. I think they'd be looking for an upgrade. They'd be looking for a young player that's an upgrade. And then they would have to, unfortunately, I think pony up a first. I don't think you would get away with the second in this deal. Um, when you look at some of the other options that are out there for Vancouver, uh, there's going to be a lot of people. They're, they're going to be looking at a lot of uh, teams. There's going to be a lot of teams interested in a guy like Connor Garland. He plays a playoff type game too, and that's the big thing. He also plays a Dallas type game. That's why I kind of liked him there. Um, Maybe, you know, you can keep Gariana, but I don't think Dallas can afford it either. Dallas has got some cap issues as well. I'm not even sure if they'd be able to make it work with the cap doing it this way. Let's take a look at that really quick before we move on. Do they have any cap space at all this year? $2 million in cap space. They could maybe just fit him in and uh, again upgrade Dallas seems to go for it every year they, they I, I don't necessarily think that they have a lineup that is going to take out the Colorados and stuff but it certainly seems that they do and I do think that they will be looking to upgrade in the forward position um, and there's a few other options there's a few other deals that will probably be made in Dallas but this could be one of them next the Anaheim Ducks now, the Anaheim Ducks, um, I don't think the Anaheim Ducks are going to be looking to go for it this year. But I do think that they can upgrade with a younger player that um, can be on the roster for a while, in which case he can. They would definitely look into it, especially a guy who plays as hard and tough as Connor Garland does. I don't know. I feel like he brings something, a little bit of something that they don't really have a grit and determination and pushback that Anaheim could really use. Um, now, who would go back in this deal? I'm looking at Maxim Comtois. He's only making $2 million for the next two years. Um, hasn't really worked out in Anaheim. Um, 
I think he's got a lot more upside than he is, and I think a change of scenery might help him out. I don't know if he's ever going to have the offense that they that Anaheim was ever looking for from him, although he did put up some decent numbers before. It seems like he's lost some confidence. Maybe a different coach. Uh, he had 33 points in 55 games. This is not a great year for him. And it's possible they could be going, you know what, maybe Maxim needs a change of scenery. We can get somebody like Garland who can help us now. He's still 25. He's still young enough, and he can bring a lot to a team. I wouldn't be only Maxim Comtois in this deal. I know Anaheim's not going to give up their first this year, so and they don't want to be taking too much money back. So you're probably going to be looking in the uh, prospect category. Maybe Jack Purbix is doing fantastic in college right now. Maybe somebody like that Vancouver could be looking at. Um, again, Vancouver is looking to get bigger and stronger. Rutherford almost certainly will be looking in that department. Uh, Braden Tracy is another guy who is playing in the AHL right now, is putting up some pretty decent numbers, if I remember. Yeah, 25 points in 31 games. They've been grooming him for a while. That's another prospect they could throw into this deal to make it work, possibly a second-round pick. And you got yourself a 50 to 60 point forward that even might even might even have more upside than that that signed at five million for the next four years that and can hopefully find a home with say Trevor Zegers and Sonny Milano. Wow, that would be a spectacular line if it all works out the way it could. I love Zegers. I think he would work well on that line. Um, It'd be fun to watch, and his sort of energy would be unbelievable. He can play all over the lineup, too. Right wing, left wing, he can play with Lundestrom. Um, another one you could put in there, Sam Steele hasn't worked out the best. Maybe something like Sam Steele and Comtois, both of them going back for Garland, and maybe Vancouver throws in a little bit as well to make it all even out. What do you think, Anaheim Ducks fans? By the way, if you like this sort of content, I do these sort of trades all the time sub yourself up to my channel like it and uh, you can also join me on my live streams that i do i do game live streams i do um, game analysis for great awesome play-by-play -play guys like off the wall john peyton on the radio you might want to check it out it's a lot of fun sub yourself up next the boston bruins and the Boston Bruins are going to be looking at a whole bunch of things. Now, a number one center is probably, no, sorry, number two center is probably still going to be on the top of their list. But they're always looking for depth and scoring. And they it appears that they got to find a, ro a home for Jake DeBrusque, although he has been playing a little better yet. He may not be as high. He, he did ask for a trade. And usually when a player asks for a trade, they can't really go back. Uh, it doesn't happen too often that way. Now, Jake DeBrusque is, unfortunately, the problem with putting Jake DeBrusque in this deal is he may be making a little more money, and, he, and he's a 2022 restricted free agent, so he's going to have to be signed. And uh, again, he's going to have to be get, given a uh, qualifying offer at least, which is going to put him almost where Connor Garland is. So I don't think he could possibly part, be part of this deal. I think it's going to would cost Boston a first round pick. And I don't really honestly think they will want to trade DeBrusque until the summer. I, I, unless they're going to get a player back that's better than him or a center, I think they wouldn't want to do that in this deal. They do have some cap space, though. They can make this work. Um, you could have a first-round pick, say Connor Clifton, because another thing Vancouver would be looking for is defense. He's not making all that much money. And a good prospect like Jack Atkin. Possibly something like that. Um, but looking at that deal I just offered, I have a feeling that other teams would be the other teams would be offering a little bit more. I'm pretty sure Vancouver will be looking for a guy like Vakaninen, but I'm almost positive Boston is just really liking that guy right now. 
They don't have a defenseman to really replace him for the playoffs. I doubt he would be part of the deal. I think the deal would be something like I just offered. A first-round pick, a prospect, and somebody like... Oh, who did I say again? Connor Clifton. <laughs> kind of forgot. Just tell me, Boston fans, would you be up for that deal? Um, Got to love the guy. Great playoff performer. Would be fantastic um, along on the right side, even with Bergeron and Marchand would be excellent. You could put Pasternak back up here. Connor Garland could try to go with Hall and, of course, Halla in the middle or the next center that you pick up, uh, which, again, I think that would be part of a Jabrus deal and would have to be dollar for dollar. But I do believe Boston will figure out a way to do it. What do you think, Boston? Do you think that would be a great deal for you? Uh, sub yourself up if you like this content. I'm going to be doing all kinds of trade stuff. I, I love it. It's one of my favorite things in the land to do. Next, the Detroit Red Wings. And this just is a Stevie Y guy. Connor Garland is the kind of guy that Stevie Y looks for when he drafts, when he picks up players. He loves skill. I think they could desperately use a pushback player to help a guy like Tyler Bertuzzi, who is really the biggest, and, and Dylan Larkin, to, to bring that. I, if, whenever I watch Detroit games, I'm all, uh, uh, if their skill doesn't work, it doesn't seem like they have that pushback and courage and confidence to come back when they're down and uh, you know be that type of team. Connor Garland brings that energy to a team, and I really think that he would be somebody that they would be interested in. Now, again, they're not wanting to take money back. So who would they give up? I know one of the reasons why I think Detroit would be a good fit here is I do think Detroit would be looking for a younger defenseman. And the guy that I think might be in there, somebody that they would be looking at is a defensive defenseman like Gustav Lindstrom. Now, Detroit really needs him right now if they were going to make the playoffs, but I don't think they are. They don't need him later. They have incredible defensive prospects coming up in Volander and Edvinson and Tuomistu. Um, none of those guys I think that they, they would be would be part of, they'd want to part with in this deal. But a guy like Lundqvist, they just might pony up a second and maybe Joseph Valino. Joseph Foligno looks like he's going to be a third-line guy. He's bigger. He plays the type of game that Vancouver's missing. He looks like he's going to be a really good penalty killer. Vancouver's penalty kill sucks. And they're not taking much money back in the deal. So they can work out a deal with Besser or Miller or all of those things that they want to make money room for to make it work. I think this would be my favorite out of all of them. Detroit, to me, would be my best bet for making a deal for a guy like Connor Garland. He's got high point potential in the 50-60 point range, and he brings something that I just don't see on this Detroit team. What do you guys think? Do you think that Connor Garland would work well in Detroit? I also think Detroit is getting to the point where it's not just about bringing in prospects. They're getting to the point where this is a team that might want to be looking to win in the next two years, maybe even next year. They have tons of prospects coming up. They can afford to lose the odd one, and they are already getting really good with Raymond. Uh, of course, Moritz Sider looks amazing, Philip Peronik, uh, and you've always had – Dylan Larkin there, Tyler Bertuzzi, Robbie Fabry's working out really well. I think he could be fantastic in this order, in this, this lineup. Detroit fans, sub yourself up, hit the bell, come over to my live stream uh, that I do from 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern. You can talk about this trade and all other kinds of sports stuff that are hockey stuff that we do there. If you're a big hockey fan, you'll really enjoy it. Maybe just put it in the comment section what you think about this deal. 
I'm going to be sending this out to all the lands and uh, getting your opinions on it because I love doing that as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is all part of the NHL, uh, the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all sports and um, teams involved and things going on with all sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. As you can see, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. That's me. You can be there 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern. Have a great day, everybody. That's my full 42K. Bye.